fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high of silver, the Lone Ranger. Faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you still there? Away! Dave Andrews sat at a table in the Pecos Cafe with his eyes glued to the door. In spite of his 22 years, the pallor of his skin and the bitterness in his eyes made him seem almost as old as his rough-looking 30-year-old companion, Tony Hooker. Tony put down his glass and stared at his partner a moment. Then he spoke. Now listen, Dave, we've been coming here and sitting in this cafe day after day for a week. Why don't you give up this local idea of yours? Tony, if I have to wait around here a month, I'm going to do it. Until I see the hombre I'm waiting for. Two weeks ago, when I was leaving territorial prison, a new prisoner told me that that masked man and his Indian friend were in this territory. Sooner or later, that Indian is going to come in here snooping. From what I've heard, they're dynamite, partner. I told you why I'm out to get that mask, man. Sure, sure. He was responsible for sending you to prison two years ago. And when your old man shot a sheriff a year or so ago, it was the Lone Ranger who caught him and turned him over to the law. Yeah. And Dad was hanged. You're liable to wind up the same way, Dave, if you don't come to your senses. I'm taking that chance. If you're getting cold feet stringing along with me, Tony, oh, all right? isn't that... I did an eight-year stretch in prison. You and I headed off together when we were cellmates a year before I got out. I promised you I'd meet you with a horse and a gun, and we agreed we'd be partners. That's right. Only I figured you'd feel like I did. We'd be in the clear and have a chance to go straight. Well, it'd be easy for us to get jobs on some You ought range. to take up preaching, Tony. Oh, you got me wrong, Dave. I figure we're both alone in the world. I sort of feel we're at the turning point, you might say. What do you mean? Well, if you decided to head south and take up with the old gang, I'm with you. If you make up your mind to go straight, I'm with you on that, too. Frankly, that's what I'd rather have us both do. I'm tired of running from the law. You know why I'm here and I'm going through with it. Murder doesn't sit well with me. When it comes to showdown, I'll handle things alone, so don't worry. After I settle with a masked man, there's something else I'm going to do. Yeah, what? I'll tell you when the time comes. I mean, Tony, look. That's the engine. He was with the Lone Ranger when I was captured. A week of waiting has paid off. Now what do we do? We'll wait till he leaves. Then we'll pick up his trail and see where they're camped. Just as you say, Dave. But I still say you're playing with dynamite.
The Indian Dave had recognized was Tonto, the Lone Ranger's companion. He stayed only a short time in the cafe, and after he left, Dave and Tony walked to the front window and watched him ride from town. It was not quite sundown as they went out and mounted. We'll follow his trail, but we'll have to be careful to keep out of sight. Yeah, that Indian's plenty smart. Uh, easy, boy. Stay there. Come on, get it, get it, get it. The two men stayed some distance behind Tonto so that they would not be seen. They noted where the Indian turned off the trail and headed for a woodland grove near the top of a low hill. But they didn't stop for fear they might have been observed on the trail. After they had gone out of sight around a bend, Dave pulled to a halt. Ho, 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 ho. I'm certain they must be camped in that wooded grove on that hill, Tony. Yeah, it looks that way. Yeah, they must have seen us ride past. What of it? We didn't stop, so they'll think we're just a couple of cowpokes going home from town or something like that. What do we do next? We'll wait among those trees yonder. We'll wait for what? Until dark. And a long time after that, too. Then when I figure they're both sleeping, we'll sneak up on them and surprise them. You mean you'd plug them while they slept? No, no. I want that masked man to know who does it and why. Now listen, Dave, like I said before, I don't want to get mixed up in a... You're murder. not going to get mixed up in it. You'll help me get the drop on him, but I'll do the shooting. Of course, if you want me to go alone... No, or... no, no, I'll go with you. All right, then. Now let's ride back among those trees and wait till it's time to go. Right. Get up there. Get up there. Get up there. Get up there. The Lone Ranger and Tonto had camped in the vicinity of Pecos to await the return of the Lone Ranger's nephew, Dan Reed, who had been to El Paso. A few hours later, the Lone Ranger and Tonto had been sleeping for a short while when they were aroused by a warning whinny from the great horse, Silver. They awoke simultaneously to see two figures in the moonlight standing close to them, holding guns. All right, please. We got you both covered. Well, Tonto, seems that we have company. Ah. Better be serious, mister. And careful. We mean business. So I see. We're watching both of you closely. All right, get to your feet. But keep your hands away from your guns. Do as he says, Toto. Uh, I'm ready to shoot. Now what? Dave stepped closer to the masked man and foolishly tilted his face toward the moonlight as he stood barely a foot away. Then he said, The moon is bright. Take a good look, mister. Remember me? I can't say that I do. You had me sent to prison two years ago. My dad was hanged because of you after that. Oh, you must be the Andrews boy, Dave Andrews. So you do remember. Good. I wanted to tell you what I'm going to do to you in the engine. You've come here to kill us, is that it? That's it. Keep your gun on that redskin, Tony. Yeah, sure, I am covered. Right now, Dave, you're clear with the law. Your father killed a man in cold blood. He knew the penalty he'd have to pay for that. But you have a chance to live a decent life. Why spoil it? Don't try to talk me out of this. Hey, Dave, maybe... Shut up, Tony. You know what I came to do? Oh, I've waited for this chance. You're still young. If you kill, you'll be hunted for murder. Hunted until you're caught and finally hanged. Is that what you want, Andrews? Shut up. Shut up, you hear? I... I swore to find you. As I... Dave, seemingly upset by the Lone Ranger's words, momentarily stopped talking and glanced as if for support at Tony, who stood close to Tonto... The Lone Ranger, whom Tonto was watching closely, suddenly went into action. One hand slammed down hard on the gun Dave held. And the masked man's other hand swung a strong side blow to Dave's chin. Give me that gun. The action by the masked man and Indian had taken Dave and Tonto by surprise. Before they could avoid it, their guns were in the hands of the men they had come to shoot. All right, Andrews, get up. We have the guns now. Ah, uh, you raise hands. Sure, sure. Oh, I, I don't, I don't savvy I you. I warned you they were tying to my Dave. The way you talked, you took me off guard. Well, I... I reckon I've made a mess of it, Tony. I'm sorry I got you into this. Oh, forget it, partner. Maybe it's better this way. Another stretch in prison is better than a rope anyway. I'll take the bullets from your gun. Do the same with that one, Tony. Uh -huh. Here, Andrews. Take back your gun and holster it. Uh, here, yours. What are you going to do? Where are your horses? We left them down there among the trees. We'll go there with you. Start walking. A short time later, Dave and Tony stood beside their horses. Both of them looked at the Lone Ranger, wondering what came next. Andrews, you're not a killer. 
I doubt that you would have gone through with it. I tried to get him to forget the whole thing, but he was sort of loco about getting revenge. I told you before you were clear with the law and had the chance to live a decent life. Well, that's finished now, I reckon. After we're you... letting both of you go this time. I'm going to let you have that chance. Holy mackerel. Well, maybe, maybe you aim to shoot us in the back as we ride away. Oh, no, Dave. We don't shoot men in the back. Oh, that's right, Dave. I know that's true about him. Mountain leave. But remember this. If you ever try to gun us again, I'll do my best to take you in for attempted murder. Now, get out of here. Boy, steady. Get it. Come on, get it. Get it. <laughs> uh, them ride plenty fast. Yes. I noticed Dave Andrews' hand shaking as he held his gun on me at camp. Perhaps by giving him another chance, we've taught him a lesson. Well, let's get back to the grove. Ah. Still somewhat bewildered by the turn of events, Dave and Tony returned to the cafe. Dave said little until Tony finally asked, Well, Dave, I reckon that changed things plenty. What are we going to do now? I reckon I'll have to forget about settling with the mass I'll man. stop but... thinking about it. What do we do next? There's something else I came here to do, Tony. Dad wrote me a letter before he... Well, before he died. Seems my mother was the daughter of a rich rancher. When she married Dad, her father turned against her. Dad took Mom to Duff Creek to live. Well, then what? Oh, well, I was still a little shaver. Indians burned us out and killed Mom. It sure was tough. Yeah. Yeah, Dad brought me up from then on. Her folks knew we escaped the Indians, but that's all. Mom's father died, but... Dad wrote that Mom's mother is living on the ranch they own just a few miles from Pegasus. That's right here. You mean you have a rich grandmother living near here? Yeah. Yeah, she owns the dentist spread. And, Tony, I aim to make her pay me plenty. So as I'll not tell everybody her daughter's husband was hung for murder. Hey, I reckon the old lady wouldn't want folks to know her son-in-law got hung and her grandson was in prison. Uh, maybe you better forget oh, now, it. Now, look, there you go again. I see a chance to get enough cash for us to get a good start, and you try to ruin it. I was right about to... Uh, do what you want. How are you aiming to go about it? A ride to the dentist spread in the morning. I figure the old lady will pay plenty for me to leave this territory and keep my mouth shut. At dawn the following morning, the stage from El Paso arrived in Pecos. When the coach door opened, Dan Reed, the Lone Ranger's teenage nephew, got out first and turned and helped an elderly lady to alight. Careful, Mrs. Dennis. I declare, Danny, you made me forget what a hard trip it was. Why, you've been so attentive, I feel mighty flattered. <laughs> I enjoyed talking with you. I want you to come out, maybe tomorrow, to see me at the Bardi spread. I have a pair of silver spurs I want you to have. They used to belong to my husband when he was young. You've been so kind, I'd like you to have them. Oh, golly, that'd be fine. Oh, oh but I'm, I'm meeting friends and we're leaving here this afternoon. Oh, dear. Well, then, come out before you go, just for a short visit. It'll please me so much. Now, promise you'll come. All right, Mrs. Dennis. I'm sure it can be arranged. A curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue. It was just before noon when Dave Andrews and Tony turned in at the entrance to the Dennis Ranch House. Hey, Dave, this is a mighty fine spread. You suppose your old man was making up all that stuff about Mrs. Dennis being your grandmother? If she asked for proof, how could you... Ever sh- since I was a youngster, I've worn a locket under my shirt. A gold locket with a picture of mom in it. That ought to be proof enough. The old lady will recognize her own daughter's picture. Oh, 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 the, oh, no. oh. You stay here like come on. Well, young man? Oh, howdy, ma'am. I, I'd like to talk private to you about something important. Oh, of course. Come right in. Well, thanks. Now, you sit right down, young man, and make yourself comfortable. Oh, thanks. I declare I'm not as young as I used to be. Uh, this easy chair feels mighty good. Oh, yes, ma'am. And now, like I said, I oh, want to talk... Now, there I go, forgetful of my manners. You brought a friend with you, and I should have asked him in, too. Oh, no, he, uh, he, he wanted to wait out there. Oh, well, uh, what's your name, young man? Well, it, uh, it's Dave. Dave. Mercy sakes. I had a daughter who married a man by that name, Dave Andrews. I liked him so much, but my husband didn't. Well, you... You liked your your daughter's husband? Yes, of course. But they had to run away to be married. Ada never came back, and I wasn't allowed to visit her or write to her. It near broke my heart. Then she... She was killed by Indians, and her husband disappeared with their little son. But look, Mrs. Dennis, I've got You know, that was 20 years ago... My husband died not long after we heard about Ada. Oh, what was it you wanted to say to me, son? Well, I... Oh, I made a mistake, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. I, I came to the wrong place. I, I'll stop by another time. Goodbye, ma'am. Goodbye, Dave. Well, how'd you make that? Shut up and let's get away from here. Easy, boy. Come on, get him! Get him! Get him! That afternoon, Dan Reed visited Mrs. Dennis as he had promised. She presented him with the silver spurs and was pleased as he examined them eagerly. Oh, golly, these are beauties. Oh, thanks a lot, Mrs. Dennis. I'm glad you like them. Are you sure you want me to have them, ma'am? Oh, of course, Dan. I'm sorry you and your friends are leaving Pecos so soon. Oh, I... oh, oh, stop your alarm bell! I wonder what Alex, my foreman, wants. Mrs. Dennis! Alex, what's the matter? Very fire, ma'am. What? Got a head start and moving this way. Then sakes. Yeah, the bell will bring all the hands, but we need more help than that. I'll ride to Pecos and bring back all the men I can get. Oh, goodness, look, Dan. I can see heavy smoke through the west window. Golly, it might get to the house and barns. I'm going after my friends. I'm sure they'll help. They aren't far from here. Easy, <laughs> boys. Steady, my Come on, Victor. The ranch was close to town, and many of the townsmen, including Dave and Tony, came to the dentist spread to help before Dan returned with the Lone Ranger and Tonto. The men did their best to beat back the flames, but in spite of their efforts, the fire crept closer to the buildings. Mrs. Dennis stood on the back porch of the ranch house when the foreman rode by. Ho, ho, ho! Mrs. Dennis, it looks hopeless. It'll soon reach the big barn and the other buildings, including the house. Oh, it's terrible, Alex, but don't let them take any chances. I don't want anyone hurt. Uh, here comes more help. But... Well, it's a boy with a mask, man, and an Indian. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Easy, Scott, easy. You're right. covered, mister. Pull away your gun and forget the mask. You've come to help fight the fire. Wait, Alex, that's Danner. I trust those men since he brought them here. Now you put away your gun. Well, all right, but you can't help much, mister. Fire has a good start on us, and before long, it'll reach the big barn and then the house. Perhaps we can find some way to keep the fire from reaching the house and barn. I sure hope so. Alex, if you or the masked man should think of something, go ahead and try it without bothering to ask me first. Thanks, Mrs. Dennis. Alex, let's get to the barn and look over the situation. Dan, stay here where you'll be safe. Yes, sir. Come on, Alex, hurry. A short time later, the Lone Ranger and Alex stopped behind the barn. The land sloped downward from the barn into a valley, at the foot of which there was a small stream. 
To the left, where the valley narrowed considerably, the masked man noticed a concrete dam built to give water power to a mill which stood beside it. A large mill pond had formed behind the dam. The Lone Ranger spoke. Alex, the fire is still on the other side of the small stream at the bottom of the valley. Yeah, but that trickle of water won't stop it. Do you have any dynamite handy? Yes, sir. We moved it from the shed where it was and to a safer place. Why? I think we can stop that fire by blasting that mill dam. It would release enough water into the creek bed below. Oh, yeah, sure. That's an old mill. We've been planning to tear it down anyway. Build a new one. Good. We haven't much time. We'll have to blast that dam right away. All right. We'll get plenty of fuse and dynamite. Let's go. Working against time, the Lone Ranger and Alex took dynamite to the mill dam and prepared it with a long fuse. Then the foreman rode to the group with which Dave Andrews and his friend Tony were working. Ho, oh, oh, there, ho! Oh. You men, move back up the slope near the barn house. Huh? Come away from here. Well, aren't you going to try to keep back the fire? No, the fire will reach the bank of the creek in a matter of minutes. We planted dynamite at the mill dam, hoping to flood the bottom of the valley enough to stop the fire. Now, the fuse will be lit in a few minutes, so you better leave here right away. Right. Get up there. Right. Come on. The men, carrying their firefighting equipment, crossed the stream and started up the slope toward the barn. Suddenly, one of them pointed and spoke. Look, going down the slope and heading over toward the mill. It's a cold. Hey, there's a boy chasing after him. If that dam blows, he'll be in trouble. Hey, youngster, go back. Don't go near that dam. I uh, reckon he didn't hear you. I'll go after him. Meantime, Dan Reed, who had followed the colt, finally caught up to it. Go back, fella, go back! Oh, my ankle! The colt's gone back up the slope. You're too close to that dam. It's... Now, what's the matter? Oh, the colt's hoof hit my ankle. No. It'll soon be all right. It sure hurts. Now, look, son, they've lit the fuse to blow up the dam. You're too close. you got to get away from here. Oh, golly, I, I didn't know about that. Come on, I'll help you. Oh, 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 I can't step on it. Lean on me, come on. Run! Run, you fool! I can't. You go on. I'll stick with you, youngster. I'll carry you. Oh, I'm too heavy. We'll both be caught. I'll worry about that. Hurry or you won't make it. Oh, no, I guess you. It's tough going uphill, but we'll make it. Hang on and we'll... Oh! Help! He hit his head against this log. Help! Oh, Silver. Oh, you just said to me, Clark. I'll lift you to the saddle, Dan. That man, he, he tried to save me. I'll put him on, Silver, in front of you. Hold him on. Here he is. Get up. Go on, Silver. Go on, boy. Great Horse Silver carried Dan and the unconscious form of Dave Andrews to the back porch of the house. The Lone Ranger, running desperately to avoid flying debris from the explosion at the dam, managed to escape with a few minor scratches. He soon reached the group around Silver. There he is. He got him away just in time. Yes, and the explosion released enough water into the valley to stop the fire. Are you hurt, mister? No, I'm all right. We better take Dan and the unconscious man into the house. That young man needs attention. He did such a brave thing trying to help Dan. Yes, he has my thanks. Let's get them inside. All right, come on. Dan and young Andrews were both carried into the house. Dan sat in a chair, but Dave Andrews was placed on a couch in the living room. The Lone Ranger recognized Dave, but said nothing. And when Mrs. Dennis brought water and bandages... The masked man gave the unconscious man first aid. He received a bad knock on the head. Poor boy. He came here this morning by mistake looking for another place. I loosen his shirt and then I... And sakes, look there. A gold locket around his neck uh, on a thin gold chain. Oh, the boy. What happened? It's all right. Take it easy. Well, you... The masked man. This masked man saved both you and the boy, son. Uh, tell me, that that locket, where did you well, get it? Well, it was my mother's. Her picture is inside. May, may I open it? I, I must see it. Well, all right, ma'am. I must be sure. I... Ada, that's my daughter's picture. I gave her that locket. But how did you... Dave is your grandson, what? ma'am. His name is Dave Andrews. My... my grandson? Oh, Dave, why didn't you tell me this morning when you came here? Well, I... I decided not to let you know. I, I came to this territory for two reasons. To find the masked man because... I'm, uh, I'm sure your grandmother isn't interested in the past. It's best to forget something. Thanks, mister. 
Thanks a lot. I think your grandmother is proud of the way you tried to save Dan. It proves you're made of fine stuff. I am mighty proud of my grandson. Mighty proud. Dave, as the masked man says, we'll forget the past and think of the happy future in store for us. I'm sure Dave will make a fine rancher. Dan, it's time for us to go. Before we leave the territory, we'll stop by to see Mrs. Dennis and Dave once again. Pato's waiting for us outside. I'll have my grandson run the ranch from now on. I hope you'll stop to see us whenever you come this way. Of course, Mrs. Dennis. Adios. Adios, everybody. Bye. 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 Dave, I reckon this is a turning point for both of us. I figure maybe your grandmother will give me a job here. Why, of course you'll stay on with Dave since you're his friend. You've probably done so many things together in the past. Oh, yes, ma'am. But like the masked man said, let's forget the past. I know that's what I'm going to do. Thanks, Tony. That masked man helped us so much. He saved your life and told us what to do to save the ranch house. Who is he, Dave? Have you ever seen him before? Oh, yes. Yes, we've seen him before. He sort of brought Tony and me to the turning point that Tony speaks of, and then showed us the right way to go. I'll forget the past, all right. But believe me, Grandma, I'll never forget the Lone Ranger. This is a feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer.